This is a planar manipulator with three degrees of freedom. This is following a specified trajectory to write the word ROS. It is using ROS Movit and Arduino to plan and execute the trajectory. In this video, I will explain you how this is working. I will start with showing how to take the position feedback from a servo motor, followed by explaining the URDF of the manipulator, then checking the motor controllers. Next, moving the manipulator using Movit UI. Later, we will use interactive marker and find the IK using Movit commander script. Finally, we will specify the trajectory to the manipulator and execute it. Let's start. These are the servo motors used in the manipulator. It is MG996R. These are regular servos which rotates from 0 to 180 degrees. They do not provide any feedback. As you can see, it has got three input lines. Brown is for the ground, red is for the power supply, and yellow is the signal line which receives PWM signal. We will remove the back cover and see what's inside it. We are looking at the control unit of the servo motor. You can find a potentiometer under this control unit. The middle pin of the potentiometer can be used to get the position feedback. I will connect a wire here to get the voltage level at the potentiometer's middle pin. As you can see, I have connected this green wire to get the feedback. Make some room for this wire using the hot soldering gun. Now I'll put things back as they were. This is the feedback wire. We're not done yet. Now we need a formula to convert these voltage values to degrees. To find that, First connect the feedback wire to the analog read pin of the Arduino board and power your servo. Note down the ADC values of this pin when servo is at 0 degrees and 180 degrees. Let's say when the servo is at 0 degrees, the analog pin reads a value of ADC 0. And at 180 degrees, let the value be ADC 180. Now the question is, when the servo receives some ADC X value as feedback, what is the servo angle? Here is the formula to convert. Remember to calculate ADC0 and ADC180 for all servos because they differ. These are the values I used for my servo motors. Now we know how to take feedback from a regular servo motor. Next I'll brief you about our manipulator. Here is our 3 degrees of freedom planar manipulator which resembles the human right arm. First servo acts as the shoulder joint. Second as the elbow joint and third as the wrist joint with one degree of freedom each. Now we will see how to represent this in URDF. This is the URDF file of our manipulator. As you can see URDF is written in XML format. This is the name of our robot. I will not go into much details of URDF but I will show you the measurements of our manipulator in this URDF file. I have written URDF file using this pose of the manipulator. Here is the base and this is the end effector. I have taken 5 joints to describe it in URDF. 3 revolute and 2 fixed. A revolute joint here, a fixed joint, a revolute joint, then a fixed joint and finally a revolute joint. Now let's check the link lengths. Link 1 is the base link and it is 5 cm in length. Joint 1 connects link 1 and a virtual link dummy 1. Dummy 1 link is of length 11.5 cm. A fixed joint connects this link and link 2 which is of 2.5 cm. Then a revolute joint connects link 2 and the next link dummy 2. Dummy 2 is 6.5 cm in length. 
Next, a fixed joint connects dummy 2 link and link 3, which is 0.5 cm in length. Finally, the reviewed joint connects link 3 and the end effector link. Now let's open this URDF in our ways and check if everything is as expected. Here is a skeleton of the manipulator. Let me check base link and end effector link. Uh, this is the base and this is end effector. This is link 1, dummy 1, link 2, dummy 2, link 3 and end effector. Now let me check the joint movements. Shoulder joint, elbow joint, the wrist joint. Perfect! URDF is replicating our real manipulator. Next I'll set up all the connections and check if motor controllers are working. To test controllers, I'll launch check motor controls .launch file which will start robot hardware interface node, robot state publisher node and controller manager. Controller manager will load all the three motor controllers including the joint update controller. Robot hardware interface node is the one which actually communicates with the real hardware. This node is responsible to send motor controller commands to the hardware and get the joint states from the hardware. In our case, hardware is Arduino board. Robot state publisher node listens to current joint states and update all the transform between the links on the topic TF. Along with these three nodes, this launch file will also open our ways with our manipulator loaded in it. All the nodes in the launch file are started, but still ROS is not communicating with the hardware. To make ROS nodes communicate with Arduino, we have to run ROS serial node. Here it goes and now the manipulator is ready to take commands. So let's check on which topics controllers are sending motor commands. Here they are. I will use these topics to send each motor a plus 45 and minus 45 degree rotation command and check if they are moving in the right direction. Ross uses radians for angles. 0.78 radians is equal to 45 degrees. Now I'll remove the signal line of the servo motors from Arduino so that I can freely move the servos and check if the feedback is proper or not. Perfect. We are getting the appropriate feedback from the motors and hence the joint states are updated as expected. So there is no problem with motor controllers and hardware interface. Now we can move forward to check the IK plugin and trajectory control using Moveit. I have created a Moveit package for our manipulator to perform inverse kinematics using Move Group. The default inverse kinematics solver for Moveit is KDL. But KDL only works for the robots with 6 or more than 6 degrees of freedom. Since our manipulator has only 3 degrees of freedom, we cannot use KDL. We can go with IK-Fast solvers for the manipulators with less than 6 degrees of freedom. 
So I have created a IKFast plugin to solve inverse kinematics for our manipulator. MoveIt uses follow joint trajectory action interface for executing any trajectory. So before using MoveIt commander script to solve IK, I will check the motor controllers and action interface using MoveIt UI. Let's start MoveIt. Now I'll give some random poses using MoveIt UI and check if the real robot is achieving the same pose or not. If all the controllers and action interface are working properly, then our robot should reach all the valid poses. With this, we can be sure that there is no problem with controllers and MoveIt action interface. Now we are ready to find inverse kinematics using MoveIt commander script. Now I'll close MoveIt UI and run the script ikmarker.py to find the inverse kinematics. In this script, I'll be using an interactive marker to select the point where the end effector has to reach and click on execute motion. All I'm doing with the marker is to send the desired coordinate points to the move group. First we should select the topic on which we are publishing our interactive marker. I am publishing it on the topic simple marker. Now we see the marker. Now let's start sending coordinate points to the move group. If the selected point is in the reachable workspace of the manipulator, then the manipulator will reach that point. Else error is thrown in the terminal. See, now we are able to solve inverse kinematics using script. This point is outside the workspace of manipulator. Now let's see the error message. This error message is from move group. Till now we have seen the arm going from one point to another point irrespective of the path followed. Now let's see how to make this arm follow a specified path or trajectory. I have added a marker pen at the end effector of the arm to clearly see the trajectory executed by the arm. To make the arm follow a desired trajectory, all we have to do is send an array of coordinate points through which we want the end effector of the arm to travel. I have added options in the interactive marker to select the wire points and execute the motion through these wire points. So let's start adding the wire points to get the desired trajectory. I will make the trajectory such that the end effector of the arm writes the word ROS. As this is a planar manipulator, it cannot lift the arm above the plane. So I am trying to give a continuous trajectory to right ROS.
Okay, I'm done with adding wire points. Now let's move the end effector to start position. Here it comes. Finally, let's execute the trajectory. Our manipulator has done a decent job in executing the trajectory. Remember this video is not to show a word writing robot, but to give a general idea of how to compute inverse kinematics and execute trajectories using ROS and MoveIt. The same concepts used for this manipulator like writing the controllers, URDF and creating a MoveIt package can be applied to higher degrees of freedom robots as well. You can find the complete source code link of this project in the description. So that's all about executing trajectories with the 3 degrees of freedom manipulator. For more stuff on robotics and ROS, go through www.rosroboticslearning.com. The link is attached in the description. Hope you like this video. Thanks for watching.